Crosby, Stills, and Nash, Analog Productions. It came in the mail yesterday. Stick around. We'll see how good this thing is. Crosby, Stills, Nash, 1969, debut album, Crosby, Stills, Nash, The Couch Album. It's about six weeks or so ago that I did a pre-order through the InGroove, which is a uh, brick and mortar store out in Arizona. I think it's owned by a person named Michael Esposito, and he's got a great web presence as well. I will put a link in the description below. I don't get anything from this. It's just I want to recommend him because he's got a fantastic service, uh, fantastic uh, YouTube channel as well. Learn a lot from that. Uh, anyway, so I ordered it. I also ordered it with the, uh, the, the ultrasonic cleaning, which is a uh, I'll put some information below as well on that. I highly recommend that. Anyway, so back to this album. Um, how does a person who was born the same year that this album came out get into this album? It's a good question. Uh, I think it was a friend of ours in high school at the time that had an older sibling by, by a few years and uh, turned on our buddy onto this album. He turned us onto this album and couldn't be more thankful all these years later. This is one of the bands that I had chased over the years, right? My sister chased the dead. I later did get into that, but when I was a kid, I really chased these guys. And I've seen Crosby, Stills, and Nash. I've seen Crosby, Stills, Nash, and Young. I've seen Crosby and Nash alone. I've seen Stephen Stills by himself in a great little theater in Five Points down in Atlanta. I've seen Neil Young with Crazy Horse, without Crazy Horse, solo, acoustic, electric. I mean, yeah, so I know this album, know it really, really well. And the expectations were set very, very, very high for this, uh, for this record. So back onto this. This is the, um, there were very high hopes for this. And before we get into how it sounds, kind of go into the packaging. Certainly not going to go through any of the history of the album. If you found this video, you already know it. A couple things I will tell you about the album first off is that, yes, like I said, it's an Analog Productions. This is at 45 speed, you know, on 180 gram audiophile vinyl. Uh, it is mastered directly from the original master tape by Bernie Grunman, so that's fantastic, and pressed at quality records. The, uh, the gatefold um, jacket here is by, uh, in the laminating is by Stoughton Printing. And I don't know them really from a hole in the wall, but I will say is, man, the quality is serious. Uh, listen to this. You can hear it just cracking as I open it. Look at that. Look at that. Fantastic. It's got that textured... I mean, the thing looks like you could have pulled this thing out from 50 years ago that had never been opened before. This, this, is, this is extraordinary packaging. The, uh, the cardboard on this thing is just, just amazing. Um, yeah, really, really great. On the inside, you do get a couple things here. Let's see what you get. We get an acoustic sounds. Advertisement here. You know... Blah, blah, blah. You know, quality records pressing, things of that nature. And we get this as well. This, well, this also is an introduction to the Atlantic Records 75th anniversary and what all this means. Some notes on the back. 
on how they came to be and why this project was started. And this came as well. This is pretty neat. This is the uh, all the lyric sheets. Okay. Good stuff. Good stuff. And that's what comes with the album. So, I came home last night and got the room situated. Didn't read any reviews or anything like that. I wanted to, uh, to go into this and form my own opinions. And man, for, you know, you know that feeling, you know, an album that you've heard, it could be a desert island album. This one is a desert island album for me. And knowing it inside and out, back to front, I didn't think there'd be any more surprises. You know, it's cool when you get to a, um, you get to hear like a different version of it, like on the box set, you know, you'd hear a couple different things, which were pretty cool, but I didn't think I'd hear anything new out of this. I've heard this thing countless times. So the first thing I did was is that I, the current, the current format that I own this album on right now is, um, is a 24 bit 96 K 96 K file that I got from HD tracks, HD tracks, HD tracks, yeah, HD tracks a couple years ago, and I thoroughly enjoy it. So I wanted to, you know, wet my whistle, so to speak, yesterday and put that on, at least just for the first song, open up the ears a bit, kind of cleanse the palate and have something to compare this, this to. So that's what I did. I sat down here and Sweet Judy Blue Eyes came on first. And that's all I listened to from the digital file. Sounded fantastic, just like I knew it would, just like I've heard it countless times. And then I put this thing on. Now being a 45 RPM, this comes with, right, being a 45 RPM, this comes with two records. Uh, you've got, you know, on the side one here on the first record, you've got the first piece of vinyl. You got Sweet Judy Blue Eyes and Marrakesh Express. And that's what I put on first. And immediately I was transfixed. This thing sounds incredible. Absolutely incredible. I was dumbstruck. I was speechless. I've tried to start this video at least three times now and I Frankly, I get stuck every time because I don't know what to say. It sounds that good. And so I'm sitting here and the, the sound stage is freaking enormous. I knew the sound stage was going to be epic and it was. It's, it's mammoth. It comes from outside this wall. It goes, it, the sound stage, I got my speaker set up 10 and a half feet apart. I swear the sound stage is 20 feet wide. It's, it's incredible. High and deep, I mean, the, you're, you're gonna get some, some bass, uh, long time gone, right? Long time gone, if I got that right. Yeah, well, long time gone, it, it opens up side four. Immediately the bass just spools out, spills out on the floor and fills the room in its, the soundstage was literally from the floor maybe even below the floor to above the ceiling. And just as amazing, actually more amazing, was from a depth perspective, we've talked about other albums here before, right? We've talked about the Aqualung, which has great, great articulated depth. We've talked about Rumors, and it has a great, great soundstage, uh, one of the best I've ever heard. And the depth was, was really big there too. The depth on this thing, so what I mean by depth, close your eyes, you get that holographic image of all the instruments locked into place, and I mean locked. This thing is laser focused to, to the millimeter. I mean, I swear, and there's no wavering whatsoever in the soundstage. But back to the depth, see the speaker, okay? This thing is about three feet away from the wall. Same thing on that side closed my eyes and the soundstage was coming from outside the house, outside the wall. And that was 
just fabulous to hear. I can't, I can't really articulate how well this thing sounds. I go back to a comment that I read on another person's YouTube channel that stated that because they had, he, this person wasn't going to do any 45 RPM records. He's going to stick to 33 and a third because he felt that his system wasn't good enough to hear the differences between a 33 and a third RPM and a 45 RPM record. Call BS. I have a very, right, modest audio file. I have a very modest system here. Once again, for those that don't know, the analog, uh, my analog path is a, and I'll put some video or some pictures up here. It's a very modest record player. It is an Audio Technica LP120 that I've had now for about 10 years. I think my wife bought it for me for Christmas and I think it cost maybe about 300, 350 bucks at the time. What I do have is, let me go get it. This is the, uh, this is the cartridge that I have. I don't know if you can see it. There we go. So I did an upgrade on the cartridge. I, I, I'll put a link into, you know, what this is currently going for right now. But again, very, very modest upgrade. Less than, uh, I think it's like $100 or something. And then coming again, going out through the, uh, the record player into uh, a Project 2Box S2 Phono preamp, which I love. Uh, absolutely. It's the, I, I should do another video on this. That is probably the single most important component in my chain right now is probably that, that Phono preamp. And that goes right out to my Rotel A11 Tribute integrated amp and then out these Wharfdale Denton 85th edition anniversary speakers, if I said that correctly. So again, a very modest system. Now that I've listened to several 45 speed uh, records, there's a huge difference, an absolutely huge difference to hear. I... You... Thanks for showing up, I appreciate it. If you want to hit that like button, even better. All right, let's continue on with the show, thanks. I knew this was gonna be better than the digital copy I had, the high-res copy, 24-bit. I knew it was gonna be better than that. I didn't know it was gonna be that much better. This thing is ridiculous. Uh, just, you know, the, the sweet Judy Blue Eyes. Yeah, it was huge. It was wide. It was the spacing on that. The spacing was incredible. Like I said, the soundstage now is, is close to 20 feet. And articulation was superb. The tonality you're getting out of these instruments, you're there. It's, 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 it's wonderful. Uh, a couple other things. Guinevere. That was a religious experience. <laughs> okay. Guinevere. My gosh, my gosh, incredible, absolutely incredible. Uh, in fact, here in Guinevere, I immediately put in a pre-order for Crosby's uh, solo debut album. Uh, I believe that comes out in April. Same thing, Analog Productions, and yeah, I'm gonna wanna hear that. So I actually did place a pre-order today for that. A couple things, you know, songs that, again, always heard, always heard, but never quite this way. You Don't Have to Cry really opened up my ears again. I'm like, holy crap, I don't remember the song sounding this exquisite. A amazing. Th this immediately went to the top of my list for all my records. This is, this is insane. You know, uh, uh, other surprises on this thing. The Lady of the Island. Yeah, I mean, Crosby and Nash had that. that they had something special going there. Again, to, for, for those who don't know, side A comes with Sweet Judy Blue Eye, Marrakesh Express, you flip it over, and side B comes with Guinevere, You Don't Have to Cry, and then Pre-Road Downs. So that's your first, that's your first record. And then you pile on, you put on the second one, and then side three is gonna start with Wooden Ships. Yeah, I mean, the best flipping version I've ever heard. Uh, great, great way to open up that, that second album, or second, second record goes into Lady of the Island and Helplessly Hoping. Helplessly Hoping was just, hmm, 
There's no words really to describe this. And then obviously the, we, it ends with uh, Long Time Gone, Crosby's masterpiece there, and then 49 Bye Byes. Um, this, I, for, for a while, you know, I'm trying to compile a desert island list of records for myself. You know, maybe I'll do an episode on that. But I always had it down. I didn't know which one I'd choose. Would I choose this one or would I choose Deja Vu, right? With uh, Neil Young coming on board for that. Yeah, it's this one. It's definitely this one. Uh, I think probably for the Guinevere help. It's just, it's really close. But if I had to choose one of them, I'm probably choosing this album. And I couldn't be happier. This is the best purchase I've made in a long, long time. Um, so much enjoyment out of it. I immediately played it a second time after the first last night. I'm rambling here. Hey, listen, first, I bought this and it was $60, 59, right? This is the, uh, this is the packaging that came with it. So, you know, I'll, 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 uh, I'll fold this up and put it inside the, uh, the gatefold. But this thing cost, what it cost? $59.99, okay? $59.99. It's already up, it's already up to $65. I checked earlier today. So I don't know how many, and it's, uh, it's sold out on the ingroove, but um, go to Acoustic Sounds, I believe, and it's still available there, but it's up, it's up another five bucks. I was reading some, I was reading some reviews today, now that I've already listened to it myself, I'm not gonna be swayed with, with what I heard. Let me just read you one that some of you may know this individual if you watch the Audiophiliac at all. This person comes on as a guest every once in a while, Michael Fremer, and this is what Michael says, quote, Given the room to stretch out, Bernie Grunman delivers a bass bomb, but even better, cleaner articulation and control, better textures and greater extension throughout. The sound stage is enormous, percussive transients are very well articulated, and honestly, this is by far the best rendering of this recording that I've heard yet and by a very wide margin. Well, what, who am I to say anything different? Yeah, this thing is insanely good. And that's really what I wanted to get through on this video today was to have that, to have, to, to have one of your Desert Island albums come out and sound this exquisite is just a gift. This thing is, um, this is a reference album now. If I want to hear what my system can produce, I'm going to whip this thing out and put it on and, and, sh and have people listen to it. This thing, it's the best thing that, I've, that I own. And I own some good records. This thing is, this is the best thing I own. So do yourself a favor. Uh, if you're like me and you don't have tens of thousands of dollars to spend on equipment, or, or your collection, right? The modest audio file. <laughs> I'm speechless. <laughs> if I can get this much enjoyment out of this, uh, anybody can. And this record is just gonna get better and better over the years when I make slight changes to my system. Uh, I'm gonna have to protect this thing you know, like a, like a priceless item, because it is. I can only imagine the price on this thing is gonna go up over time. I was reading some more reviews, and people who have, people who have um, purchased this, they say it's better than the One Step, they say it's better than the Ultra Disc, they said this is now the de facto reference version for this record, and I don't disagree. Not that I've heard those other ones, I haven't, but this thing is so far superior to anything else I have in the house and to have it on a, again, like I said, to have it on a, um, on a Desert Island album is, that's the bonus of all bonuses. So that's it, everybody. It's going to be a real quick one. Um, do yourself a favor. Put it, put, go out and buy this, <laughs> all right? Do yourself a favor. If you're a fan of this album, try to find it while you still can. Put it on, give yourself an hour at the end of the day, grab your favorite beverage, and just chill out 
and listen to something that you think you know. You think you know everything about this. this you think you know exactly how this is going to sound. And there's going to be no more surprises because you've been listening to it all your life. Au contraire, you're going to hear new stuff in this. And you're going to smile for days. So do yourself a favor. Yeah, grab your favorite beverage, kick back, listen to this, flip it. You're going to flip it one more time than you normally would, but it's worth it. If not now, when are you going to give yourself the time that you need? Slap this puppy on your turntable, kick back with a beverage, and enjoy the freaking sonic bliss that's coming your way. This thing will shock you how good it is. That's it. That's it. I hope you have a great rest of your week and hope to see you on the video coming up soon. Take care, everybody.